what's up guys and welcome to my video. This video is all about PC gaming and if you've been watching some of these videos or some of other people's videos or just generally been thinking about getting into PC gaming then I just wanted to give you a few tips that I would have liked to have when I got into it. There's just a few things that I've picked up and I think are really useful and people didn't necessarily tell me this before but here are my tips for first time PC gamers. Now my first tip for PC gamers and I cannot stress this enough is please 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 do not cut any corners. It doesn't matter how much you're spending if you cut corners now you're gonna feel it later and it's gonna end up costing you more money than it should have done in the first place and it's gonna cost you extra time as well. My biggest example of this would be not buying SLI ready stuff or Crossfire X ready stuff if you think you might get two graphics cards later down the line, then be ready for it. Get a PSU that supports it, get a higher wattage PSU, and get a motherboard that supports it as well. These days you really don't need to break the bank to buy a motherboard that's SLI or Crossfire X ready. Realistically, the sort of motherboards you're probably looking at anyway is going to support it, but do check before you buy it. But the main thing is power supply. Instead of buying a 600 watt, just get an 800 watt. I wouldn't recommend getting below an 800 watt because if you're 100 watts out of what you need it's going to be really frustrating and you're going to have to get rid of your other one and you're going to have to get one that will support it so please do not cut any corners it will come back to haunt you later down the line now when it comes to choosing your PC case really is important to pick the right one there are loads of different ones out there but there are two things that I would really recommend especially if it's your first time buying one that would be size don't go for a really small one, I know it's tempting when you see these Bitphoenix Prodigy ITX builds, but for your first build you're much better off, if you can that is, going for a case that will give you plenty of room to work in. It's not that easy. It's very, very doable. You'll learn it, you'll pick it up, it will become second nature, but the very first time you open up a PC or a PC case it can be a little bit daunting because there's a lot to do, there's a lot of wires hanging about, and if you have that bigger case, it's going to give you more room to work in. And the bigger the case, the more light you can get into your case as well. If you have quite a small case, it can be quite dark and you need loads of different lighting. And just, if you can, get a bigger case because it's going to be easier to upgrade later down the line as well. And it's going to serve you well. The thing I would definitely say when buying a case is please, 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 please get a case where the hard drives are in cages and that the cages are easily accessible from either the front of the case or at the back of the case. If you have hard drive cages that are facing towards the motherboard it can be quite difficult when you want to put extra drives in or if you've already got your motherboard installed because you've kind of got to reach in over your motherboard and it's really tight when you're working. I did make that mistake first time round. I do have a case that doesn't have that now and it is so much easier just to be able to put the hard drive in the other thing when choosing your components is don't forget about your peripherals. Obviously it's very easy to want a beefy processor and a beefy graphics card, but there's no point having a really nice CPU, really nice GPU, if you're going to be playing on a crap monitor, a crap keyboard and a crap mouse. In some ways the monitor is by far the most important piece of your machine. So don't forget about the monitor, because the better the monitor, the better your whole games or the whole PC is going to look. And of course, your keyboard and your mouse, those are the things you're actually going to be using and interacting with. So rather than spending £20, maybe spend £30, £40 and you're going to not regret it later down the line when you have a really nice mouse and keyboard to use. When it actually comes to building your PC, please, please, please leave plenty of time. Building your very first PC can take a very long time, and up to four hours. I think it took me between, ooh, it was about two and a half, three hours when I built my first PC. But because you know roughly what you're doing, you've looked into how you do what you've got to do stuff, but you're not familiar with all the different stuff inside the PC, and it will take longer than if you've done it loads of times before. The other thing is that you need to expect issues. You know, they're not necessarily all these big issues where something won't work. I remember when I was building my very first PC, I did get a bit confused when I was putting in my CD drive. It should be very simple, should just slide in. But there are two clips, one on there, one on there, and I didn't realise that. I only saw the one clip there and I was wondering why it wasn't going in and out. It's because I had to take the other panel off and then just unscrew one little clip. Sounds really stupid, but things like that, when it's your first time, you just don't necessarily know. 
can almost guarantee something won't go right, but as long as you stay calm, just take a bit of time to analyse and see what's going wrong, then I'm sure you'll be able to fix it. If you have someone that knows about PCs, then by all means invite them over and it will be a lot easier for both of you as you can work off each other and you'll get it done a lot better and you'll probably learn more stuff along the way. Once your computer's all done and ready to go, the next thing to do is install all the drivers. Once you've booted into Windows, the best thing to do is go onto your motherboard's manufacturer's website, find your motherboard and all the drivers will be in one place and you can just download all the drivers and install them all. Windows does like to install its own version of these drivers and they do not work as well, they're not as optimised. If you've got an ASUS motherboard, one of the parts is made by ASUS, you need the driver that's made by ASUS because it's going to work at its best. The same goes for all the Intel control centre and loads of different stuff. But if you go on your motherboard or your graphics card or your sound card or whatever different component you have, the best drivers will be on their website, so do spend a little bit of time to get all the drivers installed because your system will work better. If you've got an SSD, you also need to optimise that. Windows 8 makes it fairly straightforward as it discovers it's an SSD and turns a lot of stuff on and off for you, but the one thing I would say you need to do if you're on an SSD is turn hibernation off. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to do that just because it's quite long-winded to say, but do turn hibernation off as it will use up some of the storage that you could be using for other things. The other thing with an SSD that I like to do is make 10% of it unused space. This gives the SSD almost like breathing room, it gives it time and space to rearrange files and it just makes sure that it works at its best and then you also know how much storage you have without having to worry whether you've gone over 90% storage capacity. So make 10% unallocated space in your disk management software. It's also sensible to optimise your graphics card and CPU. If you want to overclock your graphics card or your CPU, now is the time to do it. If you have an NVIDIA card, then EVGA Precision is a great little tool as you can almost overclock your graphics card without avoiding the warranty. You can get a little bit more out of it and Precision X is a brilliant piece of software where you can just increase little targets and speeds and it will just mean it will run better but you'll still get your warranty as long as you don't over vault it. Lastly, if you do have an issue then just stay calm and just try and sort it out. Best thing to do is normally just to google it because it's probably a problem someone else has had but if something goes wrong remember you are backed by all these different warranties and realistically the worst case scenario is that you'll just have to be without a PC for a little bit of time while you get it sorted out. But it's not the end of the world and there's usually a solution so just don't panic and just try and get that solution and try and put it into place. Thank you for watching this video. If you think there's anything I've left out or you have some advice for other first time PC builders then leave it in the comments below and if it's any good you know it'll get thumbs up and so other people will be able to see it. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.